Hello and happy Friday. I hope you guys are doing well. This is Fridays with Brandon and today we're doing episode number 66 of Fluke Fridays. And today what we're going to go over is not actually a fluke tool. Well, we will get to some fluke tools in the question and answer, answer section. But right now we're going to talk about uh, the Amprobe wire tracer, the AT6010. It's the uh, of the advanced wire tracers. It's the lowest uh, price point one from the Amprobe family. So we're going to go through that. I will also cut away and kind of show you a demo here later about how to find a breaker with it. And yeah, but first we're going to kind of look at the tool and see what comes with the box. So unlike, you can see some cat hair on here, but unlike the AT6020 and 6030, it's going to come with a soft case. This is the soft case. Okay. Zipper. Obviously the quick start guide and user manual and stuff. As we open this up a little more, you're going to see this is the uh, transmitter. Um, you can see kind of an imprint of the tooling. So one thing you'll see that's different from the AT20 and, and uh, the 6020 and the 6030 is it doesn't have a toggle to choose high or low, and it doesn't have like a beacon light. It just is an on or off button. So when you turn it on, you'll see say when you turn on, gotta hold it down for a second, you'll see it's transmitting on high and if it's energized this will light up, if it's de-energized it'll look dull like this. You make your connections here on the top uh, and with the leads and stuff and I'll show you the leads that come with it here in a second. So this is going to be the transmitter, this is the receiver, the receiver is going to see a signal as you get closer, stronger signal, further away, less of a signal, right? Very basic. Um, you can adjust the sensitivity by the down arrow, right? Or the up arrow, okay? And when you're tracing a wire or a breaker, you do wanna see that somewhere in the middle. You don't want it tapped out at the top or the bottom because um, you don't know what you're looking at. So, uh, differences between this and the 6020 or the 6030, this is a monochrome screen. It shows up really nice because it is backlit um, and it's a nice monochrome screen but it doesn't give you like a green or a red indication like the 6020 and 6030 will. Okay, category rating, CAT3 600 volts on the transmitter. Uh, the, I believe the other ones are category three 1000, category four 600. So that's a little bit of a difference too. But this is great if you uh, wanna spend well under a thousand dollars, probably more like somewhere between, I don't know, six, seven hundred dollars as of 2022. So anyways, let's turn these off and look at some other things that come with the kit. Got to hold that down for a couple seconds to get it to turn off. Okay. The accessories that come with it. You're going to get a long green cord. This green cord is going to be used for uh, connecting your earth ground. So you what is recommended is finding a separate ground, finding a separate ground from the ground that's traveling through the same outlet or through the same light fixture as you're on. So go clip to, clip to an I-beam or something with the alligator clips. Um, that's what's recommended. You're gonna get a stronger signal. It's not gonna cancel it out. But you'll see in my demo that I actually just use the neutral and the hot in this application and it does work for us. So you've got, you know, a smaller, not quite as long of lead for your uh, neutral and for your hot lead. Question is, how do you connect these leads to anything? Well, here we go. So you've got an alligator clip. You've got a ground plug. I'm not sure what, what you would use that red one for. Maybe they're both, I guess, a ground type connection, maybe in other countries. And then you've got two bladed connections. And they just plug into the back. All these banana jacks work equally. I think I only got one uh, alligator clip. But you need to look at the data sheet. Maybe you get two. I'm not sure. Maybe I lost one. So, anyways, those. Let me do this with you. That's kind of what comes with it. Now what we're going to do is that we're going to cut away. I'm going to show you how I hook up uh, to an outlet up in 
our back room and then I'm going to show you how to find the breaker um, in this next little sequence and then we'll be back for Q&A session on some questions and answers. So we're going to take this, you know, the instructions say to plug it into the ground, but if you do it, uh, the hot and then the neutral, that'll work too. But um, if you can get a separate ground on a different circuit, you know, use that green test lead and plug it to some other circuit, you'll get a stronger signal. But I think this will work for us. I turned it on. You can see it's already with the AT6010. It's already transmitting, just blinks here so you don't get the big logo like you do on the 6020 and the 6030. You can see here it's indicating it's an energized circuit. If I were to unplug one of these, it becomes de-energized, right? Still transmitting the same signal, or still transmitting the signal. It's just a different frequency and then plug it in and we're good to go. Now, here's our receiver, we can verify that we are actually transmitting. Okay, so we know we got a good signal. So now we can go downstairs and to find that breaker. Okay, so we're in my basement. We're gonna turn on the receiver. We're gonna see if we can find the signal. So when I start, you can see we've got a high signal. We're kind of like tapping it out. So I'm gonna reduce the sensitivity, hitting that uh, negative symbol. Tell them a little bit lower. And I'm seeing a stronger signal out here. So I can reduce it again. You don't want to be maxed out. You want to be somewhere in the middle so you can see it change. So anytime it maxes out, you want to reduce that sensitivity. Now we're going to go over here to the other side. We see we get up to 61 on this side. And some of these up here, which we can ignore these because we know they're not on my, we're not doing 240 volts on my outlets. You can see 81 there. So I'm gonna reduce it again. So we go 34 and I think we had like 60 over here, but let's see. So we get up to about 25 on that side. And we're seeing 34 there and less. So we're pretty confident that's the breaker. And take a closer look at this. You can see that little energized symbol. That means let me turn off the beeping for you so you can hear me. Uh, you see that energized symbol? That means we're transmitting on an energized circuit. I'm going to flip this breaker, and what you're going to find is it's going to transmit now, but it's going to be a de-energized signal. See, now it's de-energized. So it's still transmitting upstairs, so now I know I for sure got it when I flipped that breaker. So that's how you can use this is the AT6010. Um, I don't like it quite as much as the 6030 or the 6040, but... It'll definitely get the job done and get you th there for, uh, you know, less than half of what the other ones are. So, hope that helps. Okay, we're back for the Q&A session. Um, had a couple questions that came in over the last week or two, and they're really good. So, I'll try to tell you what the question is, as well as what video it's in, so you can reference that if you would like. So, the first question was... Um, from episode number 30 on the TIS 75 plus that's this tool right here it's a thermal imaging camera and it says why two push buttons one black one green uh, black one I do not know when I use it okay so I believe what he's talking about is these two triggers so these two triggers, there's a black trigger and a green trigger. And you'll know from my TI-480 video, TI-480 Pro, and the higher end, the uh, professional series cameras, those have their black test lead, or not the black test lead, sorry. The black trigger initiates a laser, but not just a regular laser, it's got a laser distance meter built into it. So that's how you initiate the laser sharp autofocus. In this case, we don't have laser sharp autofocus, but I will show you what this one is used for. So, most of the time people are gonna use it as, just as the laser pointer, so you squeeze the trigger and you get a laser pointer. I don't know if you can see that on my hand. Yeah, I think so. Um, I'll show you here on the table as well. There you go. So you can squeeze it and do that. The other thing you can do, and this might be what's going on with his, I don't know. If you go into the settings and then you scroll down, 
there's something that's called secondary trigger and you've got a couple different things so you could use it as a laser or in this case you could use it as a um, asset scan asset ID so if we did that now when we click it instead of initiating that laser I click that black trigger the top one it it's ready to scan a barcode or a QR code for asset tagging so how you can switch that back to laser again you hit oops the setting button go down to secondary trigger click laser and then you're done and now we've got our laser back again okay so that that's what you would use the uh, the black trigger for the green trigger what's the purpose of that that's to uh, freeze an image so if I get my hand out there and I squeeze the I'll show you squeeze the green trigger What's going to happen is it's going to freeze the image. At this point, I can look and see, is it in focus? I can add additional things to it if I want to by hitting edit. I can add audio. I can add text. I can add IR photo notes so I can take additional photos. Um, so maybe I take a picture of the fuses, but they all look the same. Then I close the panel door and take a picture of the panel so I know where I was standing. Uh, let's go back. Once you do that and everything looks the way you want it to, Oops. If it looks the way you want and you don't want to add anything, you just hit save and then it saves and you go on to the next image. Okay? TIS 75 Plus, the difference between the black trigger and the green trigger and why we have both. Okay. Next question. This was my episode about the 714B, the uh, thermal in, or thermal couple calibrator, but I used the 754 multifunction calibrator or let me say it better, the 754 documenting multifunction calibrator um, to supply loop power. And I didn't really show you how I did that. So somebody said, you know, in the video, it's not clear how you turn on the loop power. If you could show us how to use the 754 to generate loop power, that'd be great. So yes, that's a great feature of this and pretty, um, one that everybody should know how to use. You can look at the user manual if you don't um, want to watch this video, but or if you need a refresher in the future. So what you do is you turn it on, click More Choices or F4, I believe. Nope, I'm wrong. You hit Setup. Setup, and then you see right here it says Loop Power. So we're going to hit Enter. This Enter button down here. Enter and then toggle down to enable, hit enter again, and now it's enabled. Now it's actually supplying that loop power, okay? And it'll say loop up here when you do that. I'll uh, do that one more time and turn it off so that you can see the loop goes away right there, okay? This also has the ability to input a 250 ohm resistor when you're in heart capability so that you don't have to supply your own for that. Okay, that's everything I have this week. Leave questions below. I love answering your questions. It helps me know like what is helpful in these videos. So leave those questions below. Again, always recommend if you've seen more than three of these videos, it's time to subscribe. Go ahead and hit subscribe. We're over a thousand subscribers now, so that's really exciting. And have a great weekend. Enjoy your family. Hopefully don't work too hard. Take care.